Hey, what is up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I'm starting a small little series that I'm going to sprinkle throughout, maybe every five or six videos, going over the core basic under, like building blocks of JavaScript. Now, if you've watched some of my other beginner or even intermediate um, tutorials where we actually build projects, then you probably know this already, but I wanted to put together a small series for those who may be brand new to JavaScript, and it would help to have somebody kind of explain it from the basics. Even if you know these things, I think going over them again is helpful, uh, especially if you're in the beginning few months of learning JavaScript. And so hopefully this will be a benefit to everyone on the channel. To start with, we're gonna focus on kind of the bare, bare basics, and that would be declaring a variable in JavaScript. Now, what I've got over here is just a code editor open and an index.html page with a script tag open. A lot of times you'd link to a JavaScript file separately, but you can do it in a script tag here as well. And then I've got Chrome open here on the side. And if I hit Command Option J, and I don't know what it is in Windows, I'm guessing it's like maybe, uh, is there like a Control Option J? Sorry, Windows people. Um, but you can open this up, uh, or you can right click, hit Inspect, and then change it to Console. Uh, that'll work as well. So this is all you really need over this way. Um, everything I do over here, you could just type into here as well. But uh, I figured I'd show it to you kind of how I might traditionally do it in a code editor. So we're gonna talk about uh, variables themselves. And you might ask, okay, well, do you mind just explaining what a variable is? I'm not even sure what that is. Well, like with any programming language, you're telling the computer what to do in a series of steps. And you'll pass the computer certain things, uh, certain values, where you'll say, hey, I've got this thing, it's 10, the number 10, and I wanna tell the computer to use this in some way. Well, how do you reference that 10 without just saying 10 every time? And if you want to reference it multiple times in your code and then, and then change that value, do you really want to go change it in 30 different places? Well, no, you don't. And so you can stick values in things called variables, like you would in a lot of languages. And in JavaScript, you can do that, and it follows this basic syntax. So it'll say you're going to have a keyword. So this would be your variable keyword. You'll have a name, and then you'll have some kind of like, usually it's equals in most languages, it is in JavaScript here and then you'll have a value. Why is this one not capitalized? We can't let that go. All right, keyword. So you have a keyword, a name, and a value. So that's how you'll, kind of the syntax of how you declare a variable. Now when it comes to actually declaring a variable, uh, here's how it might look. You might say something like const uh, learning the basics, and it would be set to true. All right, true and false is what's called a Boolean value. We'll go over each of these kind of one after the other. Let me comment this out and then save it. And if I come over here to the console, now that I have added this to the HTML doc and it's inside the script tag, I can actually reference it because this console is tied to the page, whatever page you're viewing. So I could say learning the basics and hit enter, and it tells me it's set to true or it's pointing to that value of true. So this is the basic syntax of how you might declare a variable. Now what I wanna do is kind of go over these one at a time, keyword, then name, and then value, and talk about kind of different things you need to know about each of those. So when it comes to the keyword, you can actually use three different keywords in JavaScript. You can use var, you can use let, or you can use const. Now I'll tell you what I do and then explain the differences between them. I use const by default, I use let when I need to, and I use var never, all right? And I'll talk you through each of those. Um, var is uh, original to the language. I don't wanna set it equal to anything, so it's original to uh, JavaScript. Uh, the difference between let and const uh, is a few things. Number one, let you can reassign. Uh, and I'll show you what that, I mean that in, uh, by that in a second here. And const, you cannot reassign, <laughs> all right? Secondly, uh, with let, you can initialize it, uh, but you don't have to give it a value. Whereas const, you must give it a value. So what does this look like in practice? Let's comment all of this out. And if you're using any code editor and you select a line or multiple lines and you hit command forward slash, it will just add come and make them comment. So that's a nice uh, convenient trick. So let's say you came in here and you said something like const best pizza topping. And you set that to, and I'll put a string here, which is either a single quotation marks like that, double quotation marks or back ticks. I tend to use back ticks uh, pretty much all the time. Sometimes I'll use single quotation marks, but let's say you said like uh, pepperoni. All right, and you set that to that, and then you come over here, let's just make sure it's working. We say best, pizza top, you see, before I even do anything, the console's prompting me. It's pepperoni, all right? So let's say you come over here, and that's what you say. Um, 
but you want to update that. And so the way you update something that's already been declared is you just reference it by the name. That's why we gave it a name, so we didn't have to type all that again. So you could say best pizza topping is now equal to, you could say like cheese or something. Okay. Now, if I save this, I'm going to get an error because remember a const, you cannot reassign. Now, this kind of saves you by making const your default because you don't accidentally overwrite things. If you try to overwrite a const variable, it will scream at you everywhere and stuff will break which is helpful because then you know that you're reassigning it. Now, what I can do is just change this to let. If I change it to let, I'm gonna, it's gonna be gone. I won't have that problem anymore. And it's now been set to, to pepperoni, and then I've updated the value to cheese. So if I come over here and actually hit enter, I'm now gonna get cheese because JavaScript reads from top to bottom. So it's now gonna say, hey, it was pepperoni, and now it's cheese. And one of the things you can do to uh, see kind of where your what your variables are pointing to throughout your code is add what's called a console.log, uh, which is just logging things in the console immediately as soon as you load the page here. So I'll console log best pizza topping before I change it and then after I change it. And if I come over here, I'm getting pepperoni and then I'm getting cheese because it's updating it. That's what you can do with a let. Now, if you forget where this has been declared, you forget you accidentally are overwriting it in other sections, you can easily cause a lot of bugs. Let's say I forgot and I came down here and I said something like pineapple or something atrocious. And pineapple? I don't know, I can't spell. I'm a web de de developer, right? Uh, so I come over here and I say pineapple and I totally forgot that I already changed it to cheese in the middle here and cheese never got used and now I've said pineapple is the best topping? Come on. Um, so this is one of the things you can run into if you use let by default. So that's why I use const by default. And then whenever I get an error or I, I know ahead of time, hey, I need to update this variable, then I'll change it to let. So that's what I do. So there's let, there's var, and there's const. Now there's one other difference between var and var and let and const. Var is available globally. It's actually scoped to the entire window. And essentially, it's available anywhere in your program. And so it's very easy to overwrite and very easy to have errors with, which is why people don't really use it anymore. Whereas let and const are scoped to the block that they're in. Now, if you're like, what's a block? What does that even mean? In JavaScript, often you'll have brackets like that, these curly brackets. And anytime you put a variable inside one of these, like const uh, pizza is equal to uh, awesome. I'm not sure why I've got pizza on the mind here but it'll be scoped to that actual block. Now, you wouldn't just write it like that. It'd probably be in a function called cool stuff, and then it would be inside here. So pizza would actually be block scoped to this block itself, and it's not available unless you return it outside of that function, but you have to kind of intentionally do it, which means it's easy not to mess stuff up. So if I came in here and I say uh, pizza, you'll notice that it says it's not defined anywhere because it's scoped to this block itself. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll go over scoping more in a future video, but um, uh, that's at least the bare basics. So we've looked at the keyword so far. Let's now look at the name. So how do you name JavaScript variables? Well, first of all, let me tell you what you cannot do. You cannot start a variable with a number. So this would be uh, no goes. All right, you can't start with a number. You cannot uh, use a JavaScript uh, keyword. So there are these reserved uh, words. So there'd be words like const or let or var, things that are actually the JavaScript interpreter is looking for that mean something in JavaScript. You can't use those as variable names. And then also uh, you cannot have a space between them. All right, so you can't have space like, uh, you know, let's say you had something like my pizza. You can't have a space there because JavaScript doesn't know if that's two separate things or one thing. So what can you do? So these are, if those are no-goes, these are go-goes? Uh, I don't know, okay. You can turn off the video now if you need to. Huh? So they can start with one of three things. They can start with a letter, and this can be upper or a lowercase. They can start with a dollar sign symbol, or they can start with an underscore. Now, I'll kind of give my best practices in a moment, but the other thing is that they can only contain uh, letters, numbers, underscores, or the dollar sign. Why did I write one out and type out the word below? I don't know. So what are some best practices? Well, what I'm going to suggest is two things. So the best 
practices are a few things. Number one, to write in what's called camel case. So most of the time, this is kind of the recognized uh, way to write. And you'd come in here and write something like I did above above here. You see learning the basics. Um, now, by typing learning the basics like that, it's actually pretty discernible what the words are. So the first word is lowercase, and then every word after that would be uppercase with no spaces. Now, I could come in here and say something like uh, learning the basics, and that is how some people write in some other languages. Most of the time in JavaScript, though, people use camel case. Um, if you don't do that, you'd instead have to do something like learning the basics. And once that gets really long, it's really hard to tell where one word ends and another word begins. So camel case is typically what people use to declare variables. There's some exceptions to that, like a true constant that really doesn't change, that must be a constant, not just kind of your default writing that could be a let or a constant, uh, but ones that really must be constant. A lot of times people will totally uppercase those. So like, for instance, you might say like my birthday or whatever would be equal to, and then you put your birthday because that shouldn't ever change. And anytime you reference it, it'll always be the same and you need it to always be the same. Um, so sometimes if you have like a true constant, people will totally uppercase those. But for the most part, camel case is how people use it. Secondly, the other uh, kind of best practice I have would be to name them so humans can understand. Now, here's the thing. When you're writing code, you think, oh, I'll easily be able to tell what's going on when I come back to this. But you got to remember that future you is dumb. And so when you come back, you're going to come back and say, what was this all about? And you're going to spend 10 minutes trying to remember what was going on. And so while something you know like X is a perfectly valid variable name, uh, it'd be much better to say like, um, yeah, learning the basics or best pizza toppings. So you know exactly what it is that that variable points to. Um, you can use things once you get further on in JavaScript that will actually take your variables and you know change them to be smaller on build. And so you can type long variable names so that you remember what they are and then let the computer make those smaller to save memory and make your program slightly faster. But for now, remember, you've got to come back and look at this later. So use names that humans can understand. So let's go ahead and comment these out and let's look at the final thing, which was the values. Now, I'm not going to go over values in this video too much. Uh, we'll go over those in a future video, probably in you know a month and a half or so, when I'm just slowly kind of building out this beginner series. Um, but you can have uh, as many as seven different types of values. There's actually a couple more too. Um, but very basically, they are string. And a string is surrounded either in single quotation marks, double quotation marks, uh, or uh, backticks, like I mentioned earlier. You can have a number, and this would go both for integers and for... Uh, decimal point numbers, and it's just a number like that with nothing around it. You can have a Boolean, which is a true-false statement, and it can be true or it can be false. Uh, you can have null, which is uh, something that doesn't exist, so an absence of a value. You can also have uh, what's called undefined, and we'll go over this, like I said, in a future video. But undefined essentially means it's uh, a special word, uh, meaning that a variable or an object is initialized but has no value. All right, what does that even mean? All right, if you came up here and say let uh, pizza, and then you didn't actually assign it a value, you just got this named variable pizza floating out that's been initialized, but it hasn't been uh, set to any value, it hasn't been assigned a value. And so if you were to come in here, let me com uh, comment this out for a moment. If you say pizza, it's gonna return undefined. Um, because you've initialized the variable, but you haven't set it to anything. All right, let's get rid of that. I'll come down here and comment these back, uh, remove the comments there. There's a couple other things you can do. You can do a symbol. Uh, right now, you don't really need to worry about what those are. And basically, that would be a, it's a special value of sorts that always returns um, a unique identifier. And uh, it's usually used in lower level sections of the language, and you're not going to be worrying about that for some time. So don't worry about the symbol. And then lastly, there is what's called an object, which is kind of a special thing because in many ways, everything in JavaScript is an object. Um, but generally speaking, you'll surround objects uh, with curly brackets like that. So there are other um, kind of details about these values that I'll go over in future videos. But the way that variables will be written 
is like we mentioned up top here, you have a keyword that's either var letter const. I use const by default. Let when I need to reassign something. Um, those are block scoped to the actual um, brackets that they're inside of. And that's why I use those because it's a little safer and easier to control where your variables are and where they're accessible. You have a name. Names can't use um, numbers, they can't use keywords, and they can't have spaces in them. They have to start with either a letter, upper or lowercase, a dollar sign or underscore, and they can only contain these here. Like I mentioned, I would camel case everything that you can. That's typically how they're uh, written, those names, and then write them so that you can understand what they are so you can come back later and understand them uh, easily. And then variables can point to anything. They can point to any kind of value in JavaScript. A string, number, a boolean, null, undefined, symbol, or object. I guess they can't technically point to null because then they wouldn't exist, but these are the kinds of values available to you in JavaScript. And so I figured I'll, I'll just add that one there as well. Thanks so much for watching this video. I know it's a very basic overview and it's a very basic concept in JavaScript too. Uh, so hopefully if you're brand new to the language, this was a big help. And if you're already familiar with it, it was a good refresher of kind of how to name things properly and um, helps you avoid some common errors that it's easier to fall into if you just don't go over the basics. For now, thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.